Hello you guys, so welcome back and um, this might be a bit of a longer video but I hope you guys will stick around to watch the entirety of it. I think it is one of the more important videos I've made in a while and it's basically discussing kind of my continuous and especially in this year failure <laughs> of being a YouTuber um, this is definitely not an area of life where I, in any way, shape, or form, am, I, am a success. And uh, this year, particularly, I've lost a lot, a lot of subscribers. And I would say the two major things that people have been very bothered by in terms of this year have been the way I have approached the pandemic and my current ideas of being conservative and the fact that I just mentioned that I, for 2020, do support Trump. And I think a lot of people just were very upset by that. But I wanted to, for those of you guys who are still here and you're kind of on the fence and you're like, eh, is it time to unsubscribe from this guy? <laughs> eh. Let me tell you guys a little bit, a little something, because I think some, I get a lot of people saying, you know, you're so angry, you're so bitter. I don't think I'm angry and I don't think I'm bitter, especially in real life. I've mentioned several, several times that I am very different in real life than I am on YouTube. But YouTube is a place where I come and I tell you guys my honest opinions. Uh, I will say, however, that yes, I would say I am a frustrated person. Um, and I also would say that, yes, I tend to let my disappointment and my frustration, especially in my videos, um, get too out of hand. Uh, I definitely come across very hot-headed, hot -headed. um, I know I come across sometimes very overbearing, I know I come across sometimes very condescending. Um, these are all aspects of my personality. I am aware of them. I have numerous videos said how I'm trying to get better at that. Um, but I do have to accept the fact that I am a hot-headed and I am a passionate person when it comes to politics and social issues. I am. And do I like the fact that I have these personality traits? No, not particularly. Uh... I have often thought, okay, maybe I need to just retape and retape the videos till I take all of that kind of stuff out. But then I always get into my head and I feel like I I am just I've always been the kind of person I don't really care about popularity. I don't care about being the person that has the most subscribers on YouTube. I care about my integrity. I've told you guys this in so many of my videos. And my personal integrity tells me that it is more important that you guys see me for who I am, warts and all, even when I have aspects to my personality that are not attractive. And I have a lot of unattractive personality traits. You know, I've never ever in my videos tried to say that here I am, I'm this perfect person, and everybody needs to listen to my opinions, and my opinions are the word of God. I have never, ever, ever said that. I don't believe that. I don't want people to take my opinions and just say, okay, if he says so, that's the way it should be. No. I tell you what my opinions are based off of the life experiences that I've made, based off of the things I've read, based off of other videos and news reports, all this kind of stuff I have seen. And then I tell you what my thoughts are to that. And then you go and you say, you can take in what I say and you can say, I don't agree. And that is absolutely okay. I don't, you know, I don't go out into life. I feel like I've mentioned this in videos before. I don't go out into life and tell people unsolicited how they have to live their lives. You don't have to do anything I say. I absolutely support every adult to live their life however they want, as long as they're not hurting any bales, and as long as they're not forcing their beliefs on other people. And I truly, truly believe that. 
if you can, you honestly as an adult can do whatever you want. But on my channel, I'm going to talk about what I think is the better way. If you don't agree, that's fine. Leave it in the comments. We can talk about it. Um, I think a lot of people, especially in the comments, I think they get really frustrated because they leave a feedback and I say, leave feedback, leave comments. And then they, I, I don't know, maybe they're thinking just because they have a contrary opinion to mine, I'm just going to roll over and be like, you're right, I'm wrong. No. Um, you can make your argument. I will read it. I will think about it. Uh, there have been times in my life when I've made concessions and I was like, oh, you know what? I've never thought about that. I need to rethink my stance. But just because you bring across an opposing opinion is not going to make me go, oh, okay, you're right. I, I was wrong all this time and now I've seen the light. Uh, I am generally pretty confident and aware of where my what my opinions are and it's not going to be easy for you guys or for anybody to change them and you know if you feel very sure and confident and happy in your lifestyle and then then I probably won't convince you differently either you know and that is fine it is absolutely fine you can continue to live your life you can watch my video and be like I don't agree with anything this guy is saying Leave it in the comment and then go on and live your life the way you want to live. As long as it's not hurting me and as long as it's not affecting my life, I don't care at the end of the day. Like, be be who you need to be. All right? Um, so just, to, I wanted to get that out of the way. But now I kind of wanted to get more into the two things I think have upset a lot of people this year. And I want to kind of, I kind of want people to understand how I work how my brain functions, what my core morality and ethics are, and that and why, how that affects how I go through life and the decisions I make and the opinions I have. Because I think a lot of people are very confused about that based off of the comments I get and based off of the frust frustration some people have in the things I say. And the first thing I have to say to that is, Life has two aspects. There is the micro component and there is the macro component. And anybody who's done studied economics, they know what I'm talking about. We have microeconomics and we have macroeconomics. And um, usually I studied, I think I told you guys, I studied international economics in for my master's. And most people who are in the economic field, you will find that they tend to enjoy microeconomics more or they enjoy macroeconomics more. And I've always been a macroeconomics kind of person. And I am somebody who sees life through a macro lens. Okay, so for those of you guys who are not in the economics, you're probably thinking, like, what is he talking about? So I'm going to say it different. I, I think there is two types of kindness. There is kindness to a person and then there's kindness to society or to a culture or to a people. And... I tend to be more likely to care about what is kind to a people than to necessarily what is kind to an individual. And this is something that I think has become very, very unpopular in this day and age. Uh, the normal thinking is to really cater to the individual to say and do whatever the individual says they want or need so that they can feel, sorry, oh, I hate that I do that. Another terrible uh, trait of mine. Um, so that they can feel okay with themselves. And I think this viewpoint makes me come across a lot of times to people as being a little bit heartless and a little bit mean and vicious because I don't cater to the individual. I cater to what, in my opinion, is the best for the community, for the pe for everybody. And sometimes what is good for the individual is not good for the overall, for the community, for the, for the majority. And then, sorry to have to quote Star Trek, the needs of the majority outweigh the needs of, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And I truly believe that. I, I, and I will always... I will always 
follow the logic of what is better for the group over what is good, better for the individual. All right. So I'm going to specifically talk about the two things that most people have gotten upset about this year, which is my, my opinion on the pandemic and my opinion about Trump. But first, I want to start with something small and kind of explain my, my thinking with something small before I go into these two big issues where everybody got so upset. Because I think like if people can follow my logic and my belief in what is true kindness and what then I, on a small smaller scale, I think then it would be easier for a lot of people to follow the logic of how I think about kindness on a big on bigger issues. So the first example I want to talk about is let's say the modern way that we think about dealing with people who are overweight or fat or obese or whatever you want to call it. The current idea of what it means to be a nice, kind, compassionate person is within this new movement of beauty at any size. All sizes are healthy. Uh, you know, making fat people into models, fat people into spokespeople, you know, and this to me is a very micro view of it. We don't want to, we don't want to hurt an overweight person's feelings. And I can see where people think that way. I think people who react that way, they do it out of, they do it because they legitimately, they feel bad to hurt someone's feelings. And I can, and I can appreciate where that is a very kind way of thinking. However, it is legitimately unhealthy to be fat, to be obese. And if you have a friend and they are overweight or they are obese, and because you want to be kind and you don't want to hurt their feelings, you go like, yeah, go ahead, eat more. Yeah, go ahead, have that extra chocolate. Yeah, go ahead, do all those things. In the moment, it might seem like a kinder attitude. But in the long run, you are hurting this person that you say you care about because they're probably going to have bigger problems with their joints. They're going to have a bigger chance of having diabetes. They're going to have a bigger chance of having heart disease. And they're probably going to die a lot younger than they needed to. And so the question is, what is true kindness here? Is true kindness to say, I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I'm going to just support them in eating more and going along with an unhealthy lifestyle? Or is it actually kinder? to say, look, I care about you, and because I care about you, I want you to start thinking about exercising, eating healthy, you know, maybe seeing a doctor, whatever. Uh, because I want you to live longer, and I want you to experience life to the most you can. And I'm sorry, as much as we try to say that Overweight people can experience... No, there's a lot of things that overweight people cannot do. And it, we are taking away from their chances of living life to the fullest that they can. And, and this is... So this is my example, my first example of micro versus macro. Is it more important to feed this one person's feelings and lying to them because you are scared that in the moment you might hurt their feelings... Or is it better to potentially maybe hurt their feelings, but in the long run, you are helping them? Um, okay, so now let me get into the two things that really have upset a lot of people in this year. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the pandemic. Uh, the vast, vast, vast majority of people, uh, they took whatever came into social media and let's be honest social media the news they have insanely overhyped this issue insanely overhyped this issue i mean the news and social media have put this pandemic into most people's mind as if it really was the black plague and i mean just two-thirds of the world population were going to die of this. <laughs> I, from the very beginning, you guys know, was very critical of it. I was especially opposed to the lockdowns. I was especially opposed to 
closing of the businesses, of everything that was going to hurt the economy. And the general consensus was, you're evil, you're a bad person, unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. I think in like the, from like February to, to April or something, I lost like 300 subscribers. When, when you don't have a lot of subscribers, that's a big chunk. And again, to me, here we have again, a micro versus a macro issue. People were so into this idea of we have to save the people from dying. We have to keep people from dying. And of course, I 100% I don't want people to die. I don't want to have people to suffer. I don't want people to be in pain. The fact that we even live in a time where I have to make a disclaimer like that shows what a sad time we live. But somebody is bound to try to take this out of context and say, you obviously don't care about human life. Of course, I don't want anybody to die. But the, we have enough data now, and it has shown that the vast, 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 vast majority, I mean, we're talking like 98% of the people who have died of this disease have been the elderly, and people who are predisposed, like have some kind of predisposed medical condition, okay? Does that mean that I'm hoping that it's okay for them to die? No. However, this is a nuanced topic. And for all the people, ooh, sorry if you guys could hear that, I'm hungry. Um, for all the people who have been talking about so much about how they, they care about people and they, we care about people and, we, and oh, the people, the people and all this kind of stuff. Well, your actions are not showing that because you have taken a very micro, a very individual act of kindness way of looking at this issue. So I'm going to tell you guys a very personal story of one of my very closest friends. I'm not going to say her name uh, because of, it's relevant to how I see this also as a micro versus a macro issue. So back in, let's say, late February, early March, when this really came, my friend, um, her and I are friends from Germany. She is a young woman. She is one of the most beautiful human beings I have ever met, kind, caring, compassionate, you know, always put her hardworking, diligent. She's definitely not a slacker. She has worked her whole life. She is somebody who's put aside savings, all these kind of things. And her and her husband, he is uh, self-employed. He's a carpenter. And she worked half of a year in Germany in a store as a saleswoman. And the other half of the year, she was working as a, like a tour agent in Spain. And they have been doing this probably for like five or six years now. And they finally decided two years ago to buy themselves a little house in Spain where they could eventually retire in. So right when all this stuff happened, her husband was still in Spain working on the house. She was back in Germany because she was like like going towards the end of her contract, uh, not contract, but working as a saleswoman the six months that she does that. COVID hit, everything went into lockdown. He was not allowed to leave Spain. If you guys remember at the very beginning, Spain and Italy were like the two countries that were the hardest hit, everything in Spain. So he wasn't allowed to go back to Germany. She then found out that she had breast cancer. And then she was done with her job. I think it's like the last three weeks or whatever she went on medical leave then he didn't have a job in Spain she didn't have a job in Germany because she should have gone back to Spain for the thing obviously all that disappeared because of COVID he couldn't even be with her she found out she had breast cancer then she had to wait two months to go to a doctor because everything had to deal with COVID everything had to deal with COVID I mean here is a young woman in the prime of her life hardworking contributing to society and her life mattered less than saving some 85 90 year old grandmother or grandfather who i'm sorry again i don't want them to die but it was not it, it's not like these people still had years and years and years and years of life ahead of them they have lived their life and again micro versus macro what is true kindness for me, this is a this is a very clip and clear. Wait, do you say that in English? 
Hippofell. That's a German saying, sorry. This is a very clear thing for me where it's like, okay, a 35-year-old woman or an 85-year-old woman, which one do we need to save? We need to save the 35-year-old woman. You know, I mean, that's just, there's not any part of me that's kind of like going, no, no. Um, and so she had to wait two months. She had to wait two months. They finally go in. Um, and she had to go through all, you know, finally, I think after three months, he was allowed to come back to Germany, thank God. And, you know, because she needed the help because obviously, you know, I can't even imagine, like, they didn't have an income, they had a house in Germany, and they had a house in Spain, they had to do payments on it, they had no income because of what's going on, plus she had to go through all of the chemo and everything, and now, Europe is thinking again of going into lockdown, and she just found out that her, all of the things she did over the summer, the chemo, the surgery, she did one more thing, I don't know what the English is called, radio waves, is that something in English? Um... And they just went back in, they tested, and they actually, the cancer had spread, and she now needs to redo everything again. Germany is again thinking about going into lockdown. <sighs> Why am I telling you guys a story? Because I think a lot of people, they, they, they took such a myopic look at this corona of, of this pandemic issue where there was like we have to save the old people we have to save the old people from dying and it's like okay but what about all the people who lost their jobs and can't feed they don't have a roof over the head what about all the people like my friend who weren't able to go to the hospital and now maybe because of those two months now she has to go through all this again she might end up dying from something that could have possibly been and saved her if she could have gone to the hospital as she should have. And that is for a lot of people with a lot of different injuries over this time. What about the what about the suicide rates that have gone up? What about the domestic abuse that has gone up? What about the millions and millions of people who have completely lost the ability to plan their life, the depression, all of these other issues that are existing in the world now for a disease that has now been shown has like a 99% survival rate for anybody who is not elderly and is not pre, like, what's that called? Predisposed to being sick. Um, and so I'm sorry, I reject anybody who told me that I am an unkind person. I reject 100% what you are saying to me because I actually find you to be the person who has less kindness. You have been, you are willing, if you believed in the lockdowns, if you believed in all of these government ideas and you believe in them now, I'm sorry, in my opinion, you are the person who lacks empathy and who lacks kindness because there is more to life than just, are the old people going to stay alive? And again, I don't want anybody to die and I don't want anybody to suffer. But it is not correct to let the majority suffer to help the minority. It's not correct. And that to me is, that is a huge micro versus a macro issue. You cannot tell me that you are a kinder person because you're like, no, I need to save this 97-year-old grandfather. When we have people in their 20s and 30s and 40s dying because they can't get the health care that they need and they deserve. That is not kindness. And that is part of... I'm already getting frustrated again. <laughs> Don't get frustrated! Um, and this is just one of the things, just in defense of my own character and in defense of the commentary I get from people when they're like, you're so mean and you're so vicious. And it's like, no, I reject the fact that somebody would say that to me and I put that back on you. I think you lack empathy and I think you lack sympathy and I think you lack kindness because it, true kindness, again, maybe another personal story. So my father, he died of cancer, okay? The last year and a half of his life were misery. They were absolute misery. He was in perpetual pain all the time he was uncomfortable he was in pain it was he was he wasted away in front of all of our eyes it was it was it was horrific 
It was horrific. He he even said how he is he was ready to die. I'm sorry, I don't see death as I just I, I have such a I have such a problem with people as always seeing death as the ultimate evil. I don't agree. I think death sometimes is a kindness. It really is. And especially a lot of not everybody, but a lot of these people who died, I mean they were I mean, these were very elderly and sickly people. And for us just to say that oh, it's so horrible that they died, of course it's horrible that they died. But you know what? Why can we never think of it as maybe it was a blessing? I mean, if these people were living in these elderly care facilities, they were stuck to their beds 24-7 in pain. They were just getting pumped full of morphine. Why can we not go, maybe this was a relief to them. Maybe it was a relief to them to finally be able to move on. I, so I absolutely reject, I reject anyone who told me that I don't have kindness in my heart for feeling the way I did about the pandemic. Because I do. And I care about the majority of, of the people. And I care about the fact that people have a job, that they can put food on their table, that they can pay their bills, that they can have, keep a roof over, that they can send their children to school. I care about these things. And these things, life is for the living. And it is not correct to punish the young to save the old. That is not correct. You will not get me to believe that that is an act of compassion, that that is an act of kindness. It is not. It is not. Sorry. Oh, oh God. This is... I know you guys, it, it turns so many people off when I get so preachy and I get so angry, but this is such a frustrating... It's so frustrating to me how... People have had such a sanctimonious attitude about this whole thing just because they click like on the lockdown. Like, you know, <laughs> no. So I think when it, so the last thing is about the whole uh, you voted for Trump thing. And here's the thing. Everybody, when they vote, they generally have the one main issue that they care about. Like, it's their primary thing. And whoever they vote for needs to fulfill that primary belief. And then they have a bunch of secondary things that they care about. Okay? So, let's say a lot of people on the right, they vote for primarily whoever says that they are against abortion. Like, they don't even care anything else about what this person stands for as long as they're against abortion. Then maybe they have some secondary things that they care about. And on the same thing on the left. Uh, I find that especially in minority groups, the, Muslim, the American Muslim community, the gay community, the trans community, the black community, they generally have their primary thing is, is this person, does this person appear to be pro-gay, to be pro-black, blah, 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 blah. If they are, then that's what I care about. And then all the secondary things comes. I am no different. However, my primary care every time when it comes to voting is the economy. That is always, has always, always, always been my primary care. I have a lot of secondary cares, but my primary care is who supports my belief in what makes a good economy. And I mentioned on my channel several times, I am a capitalist. If you guys want to know more about why I'm a capitalist, I can do another video on it. I don't believe in socialism at all. Sorry. Then you also say there is no such thing as a 100% capitalist country in the world. Every country in the world has certain social aspects to it, including the U.S. You know, there's Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, social security, infrastructure. These are all social systems. Um, this year when they bailed out a lot of companies and uh stores because of the pandemic that is a social issue that is not a capitalist issue but overall i believe in the free market so i need to look okay what candidate believes in the free market 
As I said in my other video, if I believed that Biden would be the standing president, I would have been okay and I would have felt comfortable with voting for Biden because Biden is a classical liberal, classical um, Democrat who believes in capitalism. I don't trust Harris. Harris panders too much to the far left. And if Biden gets elected, Harris is going to become the president. It is so freaking obvious that that is going to happen. Um, so Trump is for the free market. Trump is against the lockdowns. I already told you guys I am against lockdowns. Um, and then the other thing I said in the video is that Trump is going against all the identity politics. Those are some of my secondary issues, yeah? And a lot of people got really upset about that because they're like, oh, but he's anti-gay and all... And, you know, he's anti-woman. I don't think, this is just my personal belief, I think that the media has spun... I don't, I, again, I don't like Trump. I'm not saying that I think he's a great man. I'm not saying, I think he's very unpresidential. I agree with all of you guys on that. Do I think he is as homophobic? N no. Do I think he's a racist? No. <laughs> I think a lot of people forget that this man had a life before he became a president. He was on TV. He was interacting with gay people. He was interacting with black people. I mean, people are acting like he, like they just he just didn't exist and all of a sudden he became the president and he was this big time racist and homophobe and all this kind of stuff it's like he had this long tv career you can go back he was not racist or homophobic in any of these things so to me i just personally don't believe that and it doesn't matter anyway because i need to get back to what this video is about it's about macro and macro i will always vote macro I will always follow the logic of macro. And the most important thing, in my opinion, is the economy. Because people need to have a job. People need to have income. They need to be able to eat. They need to be able to feed their family. They need to be able to pay their bills. They need to be able to go to the doctor. They need to be able to have a house over their head, the, uh, a roof over their head. This is more important, I'm sorry, but it is. It is more important than if gay men have the right to get married. It just is. I'm sorry, you're not gonna change my opinion on that. Gay marriage affects this many people. This many people in the US. That's not to say that I'm, I'm, I'm pro-gay marriage. I hope gay marriage will stick around. I would be devastated if it goes away. I would be. I think it was an amazing accomplishment. I'm so proud of the fact that gay people can finally get married. But go to the Sudan, okay? Go to the Sudan and find a gay man living in the Sudan and say, for the rest of your life, we guarantee we will give you three meals a day or we will give you gay marriage. Do you, does anybody, does anybody actually think that this man is going to be like, oh, I'd rather have gay marriage and die in two weeks because of starvation. Of course not. That is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous to think that way. And I'm sorry, people need to be able to survive. And I personally don't think my own wish for gay marriage to exist is more important than the vast majority of people in the United States or in the world who don't have anything to do with gay marriage but they do need to have a job and they do need to have opportunities and they do need to have hope for the future and they do need to be able to feed themselves. And one of the people who I, that is subscribed to me and I interact with quite a few, he even asked me, he's like, are you saying that you would feel more comfortable or happier living in a country that didn't have gay rights but had a great economy? And I told him 100% yes. 100% yes. I, again, I find it I don't find it kind to vote for your minority status. Now, if you have a candidate, like I said, if Biden would have, if I would believe that Biden would be the standing president who both cares about the economy and cares about gay marriage and gay rights, hey, I am there. I am absolutely there. I would 100% believe in Biden over Trump. Biden will not be the standing president. It will be Harris. And I don't trust her with the economy. 
And then, I'm sorry, I have to put away my own selfish desire of gay rights being around or gay marriage being around versus the 95% of Americans who have nothing to do with gay marriage, but they do need to be able to survive and they do need to be able to have savings. And they do like, I, I, and this is where again, like this is where I get very frustrated about how people see me as this villain, as this unkind person. And I, I'm going to completely turn that around back on any of you. How is thinking only of yourself or only of your small community or your own small comfort, how is that more kindness than to care about the majority? I No, you, can't, you will not get me to understand this thinking. And this is really what I'm trying to tell you guys. I think a lot of people really misunderstand how my um, thinking is here how what my feeling is about what is right and what is wrong in terms of how we act and behave in society and i and that is where a lot of my frustration comes from i think if a lot more people would be more altruistic and be more willing to say i will take a little bit away from myself for the good of the many we would overall be in a better society than we are but that's not how we live we live in a society where everybody they only care about their own comfort and that is absolutely true and that is true for all of the all of the scenarios i've given so far if it comes to fat acceptance the the fat person who wants everybody else to to follow their comfort and tell them that oh you're fabulous even though you're 350 pounds that is a selfish attitude that is a, everybody has to follow my comfort. I don't agree with that. If it is about the person who wears a beard and has makeup and, and wears heels and wants to be called Jim Zhur, it is again, everybody has to follow what my comfort is, what I want out of life. It doesn't matter how comfortable anybody else is or what is better for society overall. Everybody needs to cater to my needs. No. I will not agree with this and I don't think it is kindness. When it comes to when it comes to people who believe in the lockdown, like I'm okay with the lockdown. I can work from home. I don't mind watching TV all day. So screw everybody else if they lose their job or they don't know how to plan their life or their kids can't go to school. It doesn't matter as long as I am comfortable. <laughs> I don't have to go into work. Good for me. No. That is a selfish attitude. I don't see that as kindness. And the same thing with the way I'm decide what how, what I feel in terms of supporting the candidate. If you're going like I care more about gay marriage being around. I mean like I'm using gay marriage. I'm not, I don't even think that that is something that's going to be attacked, but I know it's a fear that gay people have. Um if you're going to be like I care more about my gay marriage being recognized than the economy doing well and the most people in the country being able to live and survive and feed themselves and send their kids to school, to me that is a selfish attitude and that's not kindness. Whew. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to really clear the air on this topic once and for all because I've I'm I really, really, really believe this is just an aspect of my personality that people really don't seem to grasp and they really don't seem to understand um, because they see this, here's this gay man and this because I'm a gay man, I should always care first and foremost about, you know, whatever my, co my community says is the right thing. And, and I just don't think that way. I I will not think that way. You can't get me to believe that way. I will always I every every situation I am I encounter I always look at the macro. I always look at what is best for the majority. And sometimes I'm part of the majority, sometimes I'm not part of the majority. 
and that is okay. I, believe it or not, I am okay with losing out some of my own comfort for the betterment of society. If somebody came to me today and said, look, 10% of the people on the planet have to die, but 90% will flourish and will live in a paradise kind of way, and you will be part of the 10% that has to die for this to happen, I truly, truly believe that I would say, okay. If that needs to happen, and that's kind of been my attitude about Corona this whole time. If I catch it, I catch it. If I end up dying from it, I end up dying from it. That's okay. As long as we don't go into lockdowns, as long as people can still have jobs. I am, I am very willing to take that risk for the sake of those people who remain alive. And I have never ever been more proud of my mother who is in the high risk group and her and I talked about it and my mother said, I have lived my life. And if it comes down to me or my niece and nephew having a good life, then it is my time to go. And I was so proud of my mother because I'm sorry, that is the way that I honestly felt and feel people should have reacted to this situation. That to me is true kindness. To me, that is true goodness, having true goodness in your heart, being, you know, putting yourself after others. Um, anyway, this has gotten super long. Thank you if you have stuck around to the end. Uh, if now you're still thinking of unsubscribing, you know, by all means, feel free to do so. I have not ever and will never be the channel where I'm like, oh my God, please subscribe and please ring the bell and please give the likes and please do whatever. You know, the only thing I've ever told you guys I really care about is comments. Not to say that I don't appreciate the fact that when people subscribe, um, my videos tend to be very long and very rambly and very tangenty. <laughs> a lot of times it takes a while to kind of figure out where is he going with this and the thing that you, the one thing that you can give to somebody that is really, that you can never get back is your time. So if you're willing to take your time to watch my videos and to listen to what I have to say, then I, I am definitely appreciative of that. Um, time is one thing that you can definitely not get back and you should absolutely choose to use your time to the best that you to the best way that you are happy and content with the way you've spent your time. So I'm very, very thankful for that. I am, of course, thankful to people who do subscribe. I am extremely thankful to people who leave comments. I have said many, many times that I do find myself very blessed that the vast majority of the comments that are left on my channel are very, very intelligent. They're very considerate. Um, I do get the occasional like, oh, you're so stupid, you don't know anything kind of comments. But overall, I generally think I get very well thought out comments. I do think that my viewers tend to be of a higher caliber. Um, not trying to talk down on other channels, but you know, this isn't one of those fluff channels where people come and I go, oh, this is this is the way I floss my teeth. <laughs> you know, I mean, I this is definitely a channel that has more hard-hitting topics and requires a little bit more hmm, what's going on how do I feel about it what's the background so I don't even know what I'm talking anymore thank you thank you for watching thank you for subscribing if you are subscribing thank you for staying subscribed if you are going to stay subscribed uh, if you decide un to unsubscribe, if you have already unsubscribed, that is also fine. Um, I'm not going to... My, my livelihood does not depend off of YouTube, so I am not here desperately trying to keep subscribers. Um, but I did want to clear the air in this because I think I have absolutely been wrongly assessed and accused in the last seven or eight months based off of my opinions. And I think people have completely 
misconstrued and misunderstood my reasoning for my opinions. And I hope that this has cleared some things up in terms of how I think about kindness and goodness and valor and honesty. And maybe it made some things a little clearer to you guys. So that's it. Take care and stay safe.